We are here because we are dedicated to helping the entire CrossFit community. Determined to elevate coaches, box owners, athletes, and everything in between, we believe that this mission will begin right here, right now. While this time and this goal begins with you, our hope is that you take this fire ignited within you and weave it into your own life with the same unrelenting passion to give those you have the privilege of coming in contact with the best hour of their day. All right, we are live. This is as close to live <laughs> as we've ever been. Nothing's changed other than we're wearing headsets and recording on camera. So if you're listening to this on any audio channel, Spotify, Apple, iHeartRadio, shout out Jersey Tony. <laughs> You can also watch this episode. Well, I guess you can watch all of the episodes. This one's different. Yeah. So we're recording yeah. this one in person. I can't right? hear which you is, anymore. This is a different one. So we're recording this one in person, which is a little bit different, right? So we're having technology issues. I can hear you. But I can't hear you. It doesn't matter. It's recording? Yep. Katie? Yes. It is recording? Yeah. Yep. I can hear Katie, which this may make for a good episode if no one can hear Fern, but it's just you and me, Katie. <laughs> but, but as you guys know, it is culture week here on Best Hour of Their Day. And what we want to do is, what are you shaking your head at? Are you? What? It's not culture week? You are, are terrible. Your, cult, your personal culture is terrible. If by personal culture, you mean hygiene? Correct. Yes. That I've is been wearing I, the that same is, shirt. That is what I'm referring to. I've been wearing the same shirt for three days. Have you been wearing the same socks, too? I feel like. Listen, yeah. no judging, Katie. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little concerned because we go from my mic. My mic's up. No, go. Just keep going. Stop touching shit. Just keep going. Could, but it's not recording. If it is recording. It has nothing to do with what you hear. You, earlier today, you just said it has everything to do with what you hear. No, you can hear. I hear you now. Right. Okay. Just if anybody going. can send us a better mic setup, I don't mean fund it. I mean, just tell us what to do. Listen, that we're, we're going to reallocate Katie's leg fund to, <laughs> a different, to a different. People are surprised still, yeah. even though we've posted a few pictures. But anyway, yes, I've been wearing the same socks, underwear, and T-shirt for three days now. Because I'm concerned about my clothes because we go right from here to the games. I, I like to underpack, over deliver, if you will. But I have some clothes in the in the washer dryer here at Fern, which, by the way, at Fern, at Rife, I should say, which, by the way, there will be a tour video because so, I, I saw even more stuff today that I wasn't aware of. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. I mean, after we talked yesterday, I now notice the boxes over there. Also, dogs are allowed, in, right? <laughs> um, no, just kidding. No dogs allowed. If you're watching this, you also notice that the gym is really dirty right now, which will be rectified shortly. So I would say that over there. Gives yeah, me that's dirty. That gives me anxiety. That's because you did rope climbs. Yeah, but still, this would get a six out of ten in cleanliness. Oh, I would give myself a zero, but I appreciate. No, that. still a six out of ten. I didn't want to give a seven. I'm a big fan of the rule: no sevens when doing one to ten. You're welcome why? for that. Did you give me that? Yep. So why? Yeah. So when you say one to 10, let me explain. You want to explain? No, you can go. It's it's very easy to kind of fall in the like ho-hum area of seven, where like if it's not a seven, you have to really, a six versus an eight really makes a difference, right? If I told mm -hmm. you, hey, this restaurant was a six, sure. would you go? Maybe. Maybe. Right. Yeah. But you like what to waste eight? food yeah. and all but that. But eight was like, yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's and, and seven, yeah. you're like, ah, I don't know. But that difference there makes seven is essentially a non vote. Like, so oh, if, you, if, you, if you choose that's, seven, yeah, it's the same thing as opting out because mm -hmm. you're not actually making a decision there because nobody sees seven as any. It's not problematic. It's not great. It's 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 average. It's, it's milk toast. It's milk toast it's milk <laughs> with a Q. Yeah. With a Q. <laughs> with a Q. So I, I've done my laundry. We're going to have that tour available. And again, if you're listening, I don't think I got to this yet. Check us out on YouTube because we have professional video right now. Mm -hmm. we're, we're not quite at the point we're going to do this every time, but we're moving. It's like, coming. It's coming. Right? Fern said yesterday or Monday, we're, we're, we're blowing up. Is that the right term? You, I will use your term. It's getting to a tipping point. It's getting <laughs> to a tipping point. It's and all because you've become an influencer now. I'm an influencer on social media now. Uh, at Coach Jason Ackerman. You should also follow Young Katie. I'm trying to get her to change her Instagram handle. That'd be, that'd be great. To Young <laughs> Katie. To young Katie. <laughs> and 
what would Lou? What would Lou want you to do? Well, first of he all, he wants me. He he said that before that I should change my change Instagram handle to, to that. Just oh, change, to young Katie. Katie. Just I, change it. I do want to continue my uh, push and hashtag, we, cancel, hashtag Lou. cancel Lou. Yeah, <laughs> I want to continue putting that out there. So cancel Lou. If my you dad, I told him about that, and he uh, he's like, "Well, why? Why doesn't Ackerman like me?" I was like, "Because you wanted to change the show name to Fern and Friends, no, which don't... has also gained traction. There are people right. who want Fern and Friends." Listen, I get it. I I also. <laughs> dislike Libby, but I'm not ready to cancel her. That's good. Your sister. Yeah. Okay. All right. So time will tell. Katie and I are very similar. We got back to the Airbnb last night. We're both like totally content, not talking to each other. Katie's studying. I was watching some UFC. It was cool, right? It was good. It's yeah. nice. Were you upset that Dillashaw won? Uh, I was really torn. I was torn. Did you watch it? No, I watched that. I watched the recap. I was like, I was happy. That was a no win situation. I like both of those fighters, Corey Sandhagen. Now this is an MMA podcast, but he trains out of the same place I do. I like him, but I, I root for an underdog, which I think was TJ and could have went either way. Both guys did great. So continuing culture week, Monday's episode, we talked all about the box. And again, there's going to be a tour available on YouTube in the, in the near future, if it's not already up. But today we're going to talk about specifically how you transcend that culture from the owner, who in this case is Fern, to the staff. And we have got Lindsay, we got Cassidy, we got Jake, we got Andy. Anybody? Any Rob. Other? I haven't met Rob. Rob any any yeah. other uh, coaches? Uh, Justin is an intern who will get the no-go. I met Justin. Go, big, no-go. Yeah, big. Looks like a homeless guy. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> big. Stro- that was a dude I was, I think, talking to yesterday. Mm-hmm. But first thing you just said we should dive into who – may or may not get a no-go he may or may not get a he's going to get the go no-go in uh roughly two inside of three weeks inside of three weeks so people intern here Mm -hmm. with the desire and ambition of becoming a staff member of Mm -hmm. cross of rife and there's a potential for a no-go uh this is going to sound really weird it's more it's more often no than yes that i think we got to start there i think too many boxes Someone goes to the level one. Oftentimes it's like, man, I need another coach. There's a level one nearby or we're hosting a level one. I'll pay for you. Will you go? And then I'm a big fan of trial by fire. Like, hey, you, you pass, but let, let's just throw you on the floor. But I'm interested to hear more about this no-go scenario. There, there does need to be a level of, of practicality. So we are afforded some conveniences that most gyms are not, right? We've been doing this 12 years. We've established something that is a, is a fully operating, you know, essentially 13 hours a day business, right? So I have full-time people here. I've got full-time coaches here. There's, is, a, there's a lot that goes into that. Is this gym open 24 hours? It is not. Okay, because we, we used the code to get in. I wasn't right. sure if that's for every. No, that was a pain point that I removed because if I needed somebody to get in the building that didn't have keys or the coach lost a key or they were late or something like that. I just wanted people to be able to get into the building. So there's a limited number of people that have that code though. How much did that cost? I think the, I think it was 400 bucks. Every box should do that. Cause I agree with you. It's like, there's going to be a chance the five or 6 a.m. coach oversleeps. It's, we get messages about, we were just talking to somebody right. about that. And that eliminates a huge pain point because absolute worst case scenario they can come in and do the workout. Right. The the cheapest way to do it. So you can do all the electronic, you know, real high fancy whammonine stuff. The that's a that is a mechanical cipher lock. So it, it has no it has moving parts. It's not electrically powered, but it's basically like a, a push button mechanical cipher lock, which it could break, but it probably will never break. And if it um, does, you just, I mean, I just for four hundred dollars. Right. Yeah, worth just get it. a new one. Now that one is unique because of that door. So I had to have a locksmith come out and have to get multiple runs at it to find the exact lock that would fit because it's a it's a glass door. With so a, a, yeah, the typical like what you call it? like a glass door that you go in at most like restaurants or businesses. Right, it's a push pull. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, back to the no go. So and that'll be on the tour, by the way. Right. If you back to watch. the yeah, back to the go no go criteria. I, I think you should. Everybody should. Have, and for the for the record, we're not doing that just to be dicks. No, but you have to have you a, have to have a standard, right? The standard yeah. is a standard, and. Um, there have been people that have made it. Uh, there have been people that have we that we have let bypass the internship that then didn't work out for care any to, number of reasons. Right? Care like, to talk about that? Just we thought it was okay. When when would you have thought that this probably was earlier on? Probably somebody that had coaching experience. Right, and 
so we're just like, oh, okay, maybe they don't need to do the extent of this. So we've come up with multiple variations. The, the point of this isn't the internship process. The, the point of this is, hey, it, the culture starts no different than retention. It starts at the beginning. You have to set the tone for what is expected. And r- the reality is they have to assimilate. I'm, like they have to assimilate to this culture. We're not going to bend s- to whatever they got going on. You know, so if there's somebody there, they're, you know, they like to, you know, be unprofessional or they like to be super lax and, you know, keep their hands in their pockets all the time. Cause it's, you know, cause they're chill, right? No, the answer is no. Get your fucking hands out of your pocket. So would it be more likely someone gets a no-go based on their ability to coach, meaning teaching, seeing and correcting or based on their all, all being criteria of being an effective coach, but which more likely the, the actual teach, see, correct or presence and attitude presence and attitude so you can have some have you had someone that's like man that guy can see everything but he's an asshole no that's super unlikely okay that's a little extreme but right. but for, did you ever have someone that from a coaching perspective was oh, greater than a seven but from a presence and attitude perspective didn't didn't cut the mustard there's a there's a natural progression there so we, we emphasize hey you need to start being technically sound like when you come in the door because you have to have that and then what it will what it will do typically is it will suck their personality out of them temporarily because they're hyper focused yeah. on doing what they're supposed to do. So then we have to circle back on that and tell people like, listen, if you can't let your personality out and this can't be fun, then this isn't going to work. Again, it's technique and versus intensity. You have to be able to balance both. It's not technically proficient. It's not super fun. You have to have some balance of both. Our job is to help them balance out the scales. Gotcha. So. People come in, they get the go, no go. Think about, if you can, what's like one or two things that you specifically do well to transcend the culture down to those person or people. And that's one or two things that maybe you weren't doing well or still continue to struggle with in doing that. I mean, I think one of the one, one of the big things when you come in is they have to be a team player. They have to participate. Right. They have they can't just do the minimum. The minimum it the minimum is not going to cut it. Right. So they they need to do the laundry. They need to be proactive. I and did pick, the laundry here. Right. Today. And pick up. So you might make the team. The uh likely not though. <laughs> I, didn't, the, I didn't take it was a little wet still when I took it out. So they, they have to they have to be preemptive about setting up the classroom. They have to be preemptive about putting equipment away. They have to they have to do they have to be preemptive about restocking the bathrooms. Right. They, so they need to go the extra mile because and I don't know, I think I might have been talking to Kristen Bowen about this. In an interview, that is the best you're ever going to see somebody, right? And an internship is an interview. It's fake. It's like a first date. Right. You're getting a representation. Which means if it's subpar in the interview, you can guarantee that it's going to be really subpar once they make the team. What would that look like? Um, Showing up right on time for class. Well, in the interview, I mean. Um, me, That's what I'd be talking about. Showing up right on time oh, for class. Oh, because part of the interview is... The internship process mean, okay. right? Meaning like showing right up on time for class, which means if you show right up on time for class, you're going to be late once you're on the team. Oh, yeah. And it also shows me you're not thinking about anything. Right. So you're proving my point is the point. So yeah, well, that, I thought you meant in the actual, hey, we're going to sit down and chat type of interview. No, that usually just starts with, hey, what's your availability? Right. What's your interest? What's your availability? So you've had people tell me the worst intern you've had. Names too, please. <laughs> I don't know. We we haven't had Does any bad. We haven't had any bad John interns. Beatty. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> the, <laughs> what, what we've what we've had is we've had a lot of people that want to intern, and when they start going through the process, they come to the realization that it's far more than they can handle. Far more from the perspective of growth as a coach, or more like, oh, I just thought I showed up, had some fun for an hour, and checked out. Yes. So they would. Yeah, I think that's that's one of the hardest things. So I want to hear about it, but. You know, we often tell box owners, hey, and I'm sure I I question if you still agree with this here, but no one's going to care as much as you. They shouldn't. Fair enough. So even with your great staff, they they just won't. And that doesn't mean it's zero. It just may be 98 percent. It's not possible because they haven't they because they didn't invest the money. They haven't been building it for 12 years. They don't they didn't cut the checks that they thought were going to bounce. They did like they didn't. It's not possible for somebody to have that perspective. So I shouldn't expect them to have that perspective. And some of the things that box owners see when they think about that is like you've mentioned, taking out the garbage, not only 
organizing the class early, but then cleaning up if you're the last coach. Um, well, the other thing is you have to teach people how to do those things. Like you can't, you can't just expect everybody to know what your expectations are. You have to tell them if when they come in, Hey, I'm going to expect, I expect you, if the laundry needs to be done, change it out. If the trash is full, take it out. If the, any of the coaches need help with anything, help them be proactive, get with people. What do you need today for class? These are all the things I'm like, I'm going to tell them and I'm going to tell them they're being interviewed, not just by me, by everybody. The whole team is interviewing you and so are the members. So you not, you cannot turn off. And, and you, some of the things you said, even I think could be quantified even more. Hey, if the laundry needs to be done, well, what does that mean? Probably there's three towels left, right? You know, having very specifics. Cause I think box owners struggle there. They're like, they well, get frustrated. I don't want to spoon feed everybody. I would like to see a little initiative. I mean, like, I don't see, this is one of those things where like, if I have to tell you the laundry needs to be done, this is probably going to be an issue. Like if we don't have any laundry or that whole basket is full and you can't come to the conclusion that the laundry needs to be done, well, then you're going to have a real time, a real hard time doing real time problem solving in the class, which is like, well, I didn't know that I, I was going to intervene when they're rounding their back in the deadlift, but I just decided against it. No, I need you to be proactive about it. How much of this comes from the military? How much of this comes from seminar staff? a lot of overlap from the two. And then I would throw athletics in there as well. And I mean, and there's, we were talking about it privately, but in, in seminar staff, there's a ton of influence from the military too. So that's part, no matter what, like even myself, never being in the military, running a box, you, you, you can't help it because Castro's basically in charge and, right. and Nicole Carroll, but you know, there's a well, lot of not, military not anymore. Influence. So Dave is not in that department anymore. Right, but, but when but we he got had, on, he had a significant yeah. influence on there, and it, it it very much has the sense of like, don't be the weak link, don't be the turd, don't be the turd, and also be proactive. Like, right, oh, which the, is the whiteboard's dirty and there's a lecture coming up, but it's is, not yours. Which is go not wipe being, it down. Which is not being a turd. Yeah, it's all. Uh, like help write that like, down katie right, don't be a turd. right like which is we should that's a new t-shirt don't be a turd don't be a turd. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I do. so the so but my point is that those are all the things that you should be actively looking at because i want people looking in problem solving instead of just waiting for things to happen like hey there's a lot of things that could happen on a daily basis in the box you should be contributing to those things happening well and this is this collectively this is why seminars are so easy when you get into the machine because everybody's proactive. Everybody's carrying the load, which makes it the burden very light. Yeah, I think since being on staff, one to three people were have left not on their own accord. After making the team? After making the team. Oh, I, don't, I have no idea what that number is. but I can give at least one name, but I won't. I'll I know, tell you I know, I know there's one that's on the chopping line, on the chopping block. Right now? Yeah. What's his name? He may or may not be sitting at this table. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people and people leave, retire, move on, 100%, et cetera. Hundred percent. But you know, typically once you make the team, you've shown it, it's hard to show like I'm a turd. Right. Right. Has so, that ever happened? So has someone ever gone through the internship program here and then became a coach, and then either they or you decided that it wasn't right, or that they maybe put on a, I don't know, like faked it for that long and then became a coach? Yes. But, Yes. Yeah. And this is, this is where I'll talk to, to gym owners and say, like, listen, you, you, there is no hundred percent higher rate. Like you're, you're going to get some wrong and that's okay. You just have to be able to willing to cut that cord when it's appropriate. So unfortunately there are instances where we have terminated people and I have no ill will towards them, but it's just like, Hey, that's, that's not, you're not meeting the standard for any number of reasons. And it, it, it doesn't matter. I hope yeah. that resonated with you, Katie. Yeah. yeah. So. No job is what? Secure. I'm still Secure. in the internship phase. <laughs> Forever intern. <laughs> so, you know, and we don't have to get into it, but I know you've had a couple scenarios that were like, hey, anybody would fire this person. Correct. You know, so you, I think, yeah. Uh, were you were you more thinking, though, from like, hey, you fooled me perspective? Kind of, yeah. Yes. But then, too, I was thinking, like, on Monday, we discussed how, you said you're always evolving and learning about the best way to lay out the box. So you, it took you years to figure out how to hang the rollers on the wall or how to sp spread this out. So uh, taking that perspective into the internship perspective, like you're saying, it's taken you a long time to really develop that into what it is today to make sure you can weed those people out, but it's not foolproof, like you're saying. No, it's not foolproof. Yeah. And, and just like you know, organizing your box leadership is an ever evolving process as well. So mm -hmm. there's there, I would argue that, that there's some people that I've terminated and that was, could very easily be attributed to my lack of leadership. When I, I let them fail 
you know, they obviously contributed, but there you look back and there's multiple things prior to that that maybe I could have done that would intervene. Um, I know you, you haven't thought about this, but can you give us an example? Uh, again, may, letting things slide a little bit too much. You know, like, hey, you show up a little bit too late like there. 15 minutes early becomes 10, becomes, becomes two, five, becomes five. Yeah. Or, you know, the the lack of ability to separate professional and, prefer, and, and personal life starts to seep in there and you see interactions that, that we would all agree are like probably inappropriate. Do you have a policy about that? About what? Basically coaches and members. I'm assuming you're talking about dating. For, you know, I, as the box owner, I was never upset of a coach. We, I mean, we've had marriages, either coach and coach, coach and member, et cetera. I, people always ask about that and they're like, hey, should, you should never let. And I'm like, no. Right. If, if I, I think just your don't, intentions you just, are real. Right. And, and, and it has worked out in some instances, not, not here, but it could. And I don't want to prevent that. We don't allow bullshit which is, you know, I've had this conversation with people who's like, listen, if you're going to do that, whatever happens past that, you can't come in here, right? And if it does, well, then I'm not choosing sides. You'll both go away. So collectively be adults about it. I mean, obviously the goal is like, hey, we hope this works out, but right. I mean, nine out of 10 relationships probably end, it, you know, from the dating phase. Maybe, I don't know what that looks like, but my point is, is like, hey, listen, be very upfront about what the expectation is. Don't bring your drama in here. You know, and we've had uh, members date or coaches date members and stuff like that. And the same rule applies, which is you going, I don't care how you interact out in town, in here, it of 1000% needs to be amicable. Drama free zone. Drama free zone, like it's just not allowed. Um, so you have to have those conversations and just let people know up front. Be like, listen, I, I want you guys to be happy. However, if for a reason you're not happy down the road, here's the rules, you know? So, and, and I don't think you need to put a ton of thought of that. It doesn't happen all that much. The point is you have to intervene. And, the, you know, the, the, I think the saying that Haydock took from, um, um, from Andy Stump is, you know, the, um, oh, I'm going to blank on it again. I did this last time I was going to say it, but it was like, you get what you tolerate. Yeah. Right. So if there's a problem in the gym with attitudes and stuff like that, well then probably that way because you tolerated it too long because what, for whatever reason I didn't want to intervene because it was uncomfortable or I didn't want to have a confrontation, which everybody assumes there's going to be a confrontation where you could just speak your mind on things. But you know, the culture starts from the top and then it gets pushed down. So you think about seminar staff and then I would like to think the same as here is that, um, you know, a lot of the OGs are gone. Not all of them, but a lot of them are gone. Yeah, right? And there's and there's sure. new and there's new leadership in there, you know. And but but you can see that leadership down, right? Be like, hey, this person like learned from so and so, and and I would say there's like a lineage, if you will, mm -hmm. right? And it's very obvious, like where those kind of start and stop. And I, I would like to think the same is here. You know, Cassidy was talking the other. Day. He was like, hey, you need to talk to so and so about that. And I was like, I think you should talk to so and so about that. He was like, okay. And, you know, and, and again, I think you're absolutely right about the staff. You know, now we are the OGs on staff and we were around when the Sherwoods and I mean, Chuck's still around, but Boz and even even Dave, you know, were there when we started. And it's something that we continue to pass on because we don't, you know, and, and that's where there's just it's motion, so talking. much. There's just so much similarity in seminar staff and, and CrossFit Rife and that we want to pass it down. We, Fern's running around trying to get the, for those watching the video, Fern has not left. I haven't offended him, but he got the motion sensor back on, which is actually something we'll talk about because motion sensors at your box will eliminate other headaches. So I want to bring up a point. You said you did the laundry, right? I did. Did you also leave it unfolded over there? Yeah, I did. <laughs> this I didn't is, do it so well. this is a perfect example. Of it. I don't this want is, to work. Here. This is how you would. This is how you would get chopped from the team. Everybody be like, oh, you you just took it out of the dryer is what you no, said. No, is I what moved you it meant from by the washer yeah. to the dryer. So everybody, so you know what kind of person Jay is when he says he did the laundry. He took it from the dryer and put it in a basket. Well, let me also clarify, which you will then shit on. I wasn't <laughs> sure. I assume they get folded and put over there, but I wasn't exactly sure the protocols. But you would say. Be proactive. I'd probably rather have you have done it wrong over there than not. Hundred percent. Yeah. But I literally. So lesson learned, everybody. Kids, don't be a turd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Katie and I got a team workout in before you got here, and I just needed to get my laundry in there. But what I was saying is, you know, I think when done well, you want to pass on that tradition, and it's important to us. Whenever I have interns at a seminar I'm working, or even new staff members, I go out of my way to 
really try to push that on. Even interns that I know most likely aren't going to make it on staff. I want them leaving thinking, okay, I get it. I'm, I'm proud. And I was actually just DMing with a girl that interned years ago that we'll see at the games. Cause you know, I created a small connection in two days with her. Right. I, I do want to go back to something you said, the stump quote, Chuck Carswell, I posted it on my you know, influencer Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he said, what happens in your box, you either create or allow. Right. Or tolerate. It, yeah. yeah. And I think that's a good way, you know, to put it out there. It's, it's true. Like, OK, it's happening at your box. You're either you're tolerating it like the drama or you're creating it like maybe you're part of the drama. So one of the things so this is all like hypothetical. So let's get into some more tangible things, which is how do I start to create culture? And I think the the very tangible pieces, you, you have to create things that are intentional. Right. So a very solid intern process would be intentional you know things like staff meetings where you're discussing specific topics that's give us a, three things you do really well at staff meetings um well this is would be pro, based on what i think i do well the staff would probably be like no He's no but I, i'll give you some things i don't want to right. take away you typically provide food right um you i know you probably start and end very close to on time or at least keep it to a time frame that you that we have said. fixed no so that is like to the t right so the meeting is 75 minutes and they're done at 75 minutes so we start at seven and it's done at eight fifteen. typically closer to eight and, and and lastly from an outside perspective you've scheduled it at a time that works too many box owners are like hey let's do saturday 11 a.m i'm don't like do i don't want to be there at saturday don't at 11. Do like it's my time with the wife the family right so there's little things you can do those three things in particular that makes staff meetings maybe not fun, but also not terrible. I, then I think consistency is key, right? So like the consistency with when you check in, check-ins are important. And obviously there's more, there's more need for check-ins as you get full-time staff. You know, we were talking about doing a daily uh, scrum with us coming up shortly, but like, so we do weekly scrums. And, 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 to, be, and to be fair, when we say that, the other thing we layered on there is like it's 15 minutes, someone's running it, you say X, Y, and Z, and you move on. Right. And this, so this is what this is. You have to be, when you don't, when you miss timelines, what you've demonstrated, whether you like it or not, is that you don't give a shit about other people's time. So when we started 44 minutes late today, Fern doesn't <laughs> give a shit about us. No, we never said what time we were going to start. We said we would meet here at noon, at which I was here. At he was here at I was he here was at 11. What did I say? What, what did I say? 11.57. I did say he'd be late. <laughs> yep. But then what about, what about when you were on the bike? And we were, you don't remember? No. I was like, say? I was like, he's here at, at noon, but that we're not starting. We're not starting. Yeah, yeah. We didn't establish. We didn't establish what you're, time we started. You're absolutely right. You also, are right about that. You provided zero help getting set up. I did. I did. <laughs> yeah. He's the influencer. Yeah, he's the talent. You know, decided to show you know, up. Yeah, when you have eleven thousand followers on Instagram, <laughs> you'll get it. He, in, <laughs> he influenced my shitty mood. Um, the, uh, I honestly, in this scenario, thought it was like addition by subtraction. I was like, I have no idea what he's plugging in. Or the camera setup. I was like, let me just stay out of the way. You know what you did there? You made an assumption. I was a turd. Rule no. You, you made <laughs> you made you made an assumption. Rule number three. I'm actually never writing assume. a book, The Fifth Agreement, and it's <laughs> don't be a turd. <laughs> it's gonna have the, the turd five, emoji the on it. The five agreements. The five agreements. Yeah. So um, yeah. So I think consistency and checking in, and and one thing I'm I, I really try to be cognizant about is like very repeatedly almost annoyingly so asking people if they need anything you've not asked me that once since i've been here oh, i don't care you've asked me multiple <laughs> yeah. times right. if i need anything yeah. sorry you're not included in this have i asked you yeah you asked me how am i as a as a as a you know cohabitant during this time do you want to go into this right now <laughs> 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 Damn it, young game. <laughs> Got me. Um, I offered all you can eat sushi. I took it away. Oh, you're an Indian giver too. Yeah. That's Got it. I, he literally, the first thing he did, he came up. going to get canceled you by saying that. ran down the stairs. I didn't come up with that lie. statement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean? Uh, what, canceled? No, Indian mm -hmm. giver. I, I don't want to get into it because we'll, we'll say something offensive <laughs> accidentally. You'll but say I assume something offensive. at some point, you know, someone of Indian culture gave something and took it away and then it became this thing. And if now, you know what that means or you have this historical context on that, like send it to the us. New, uh, the new term is guardian giver. 
Oh, because of the Cleveland Guardians. The Cleveland, okay. Cleveland Guardians. Cleveland Guardians. Um, don't cancel us, people. If you don't like us, just stop listening. Don't, <laughs> if you're gonna cancel anybody, cancel Lou. Also, <laughs> yeah. hashtag cancel Lou. Also, if you haven't figured out there's a massive amount of comedic relief in this show, then you're not picking up on it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I, I think there's obviously tangible things in there with regard to like doing staff retreats, doing weekly, monthly meetings. You did a great. You had someone like an expert come in just last week. Right. I had somebody come in and who was, uh, who was basically a, a mindset expert. And I was like, Hey, like this is beneficial. Like we could all benefit from that. It myself me. included. It was me. I was here yeah. still. <laughs> Move over here because you're not paying attention to the oh, video. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on the, yeah. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm on the, if yeah. you're watching the video. Yeah. So yeah. So I, stuff like that, you have to continue to reinvest it. So then the question is like, well, how do I pay for that? And and this is where you have to get creative because there's a level of practicality that needs to be applied because if you can't pay for something, just here's what your staff appreciates effort. They appreciate your effort to sure. to invest in them in whatever time resources that you have. And then as you grow and you have more time and more resources, then you can dedicate like more. I have a, I have a ton of stuff down the road that I would like to do that would be, you know, that like that people would be uber jealous of. They'd be like, damn, I want to go there because they're getting all of that. Like, that's what I want to do for people. Yeah, and, and again, staff does that for us. When when we have a summit, they right. bring in experts. Right. They, you know, and they also do team building things, team workouts. Right. We run together. Uh, we do drills together. So a lot of that has carryover. Yeah. Do you do you remember a moment where? So I'll, I'll give you an example. I had my first coach, Matt. He's in the book, best hour of their day, and he was a great. He's still a great coach, great friend, and. I remember Donna. I've talked about talked about her before as well. My eight-year-old woman. The t-shirt lady. Was she one? the one that was printing her own t-shirts? <laughs> no, I don't want to say that wasn't Donna. <laughs> but I can say that person's name. I won't. Um, no, Donna was an eight-year-old woman. She had the metal rod on her back. I think I've spoken okay. about her. And she came up to me and she was like, you better watch out. He's People are going to like him more than you. And that was a big moment for me because I was like, oh, man, I do have to watch out. And then... It, and then I very quickly realized, wait, that's awesome. It's great. I can leave. And there's someone people like, not only like, but actually like more than me. And I'm growing my, I'm, he's helping me grow my business. There, there's a lot of things you can do here. So when a lot of people will, will delegate things, but not delegate the authority to make decisions there. So that would be one. So if you're going to delegate something you need to, I was talking to another guy here, a member here who's uh uh, big in the car sales world and he manages a ton of uh, dealerships and like as he was growing his boss who's uber successful you know they were they were talking about his management style and he's like hey do you enjoy when you have a line of people outside your door who are coming to you to solve problems and he was like yeah and he goes it's bad leadership right they should be solving them they should themselves. be solving their own problems. i know one thing right. you do well that with that is you have like a 50 dollar limit or something might be more than that where you're like buy anything you need am i making this up Oh, uh, no, they, it? well, yeah. So depending on what their role is, if it requires purchasing, they could just do it. So it, it, there's a threshold. Yeah. I mean, I typically know what it is. Or I'm like, just send me the receipt. Right. But like you have the, you have the ability to do it. They, they have the ability to um, solve problems up to a, a, to a threshold. So like up to 300 bucks, they can make a decision on that. So I base that on like, Hey, roughly what would, you know, on average, what would be two months worth of membership. So if you have a, if you have a, if you have a membership issue, the, the peak of that cost is typically going to be on the high end two months. It typically be less than that. But I don't want somebody who comes in who's got an issue because they canceled and it didn't get processed. I don't want the coach to say, let me talk to Fern. I'll see if we can get that done. Solve it right now. Like, and, don't, don't say anything other than we'll take care of it and then go fix it. And that can look like, hey, I'm going to give you a free month. Right. So you, you give them that threshold or something breaks and they need something immediately rather than you having to do something or right. hop on Amazon. Buy it, fix it. Yeah, just yeah. just go for it. What were some times where, well, well, hey, did you did you have that moment where you realized I'm actually doing a good job with this culture thing? I'm a little tough on myself. I always kind of think I'm doing a mediocre job, but I think, right. I think that um, <laughs> probably right. Um, I, I just think that it, there's forcing functions in there, which is if you're the if you're the if you're the stopgap, then something is going to come in and break to make you either adjust or fall apart completely. Um, I don't know if there was something specific, um, but I think sometimes you, you just come to the realization, and this is probably like a Gary Vee quote, is like understanding that like somebody operating at a seven is better than you operating at an 11. Oh, I like that. So you're saying it's better to have people under you doing it not quite as well as you, 
than you having to do everything. Well, it's also you're, you're not allowing them to grow. Of course, they're not going to do it as well as you if you don't give them the opportunity to grow. Right, and they will eventually they be will a eventually, 10 or 11. They'll be a 10 or 11. And then some of that is just based on ego where you're like, nobody can do this as, as well as I can. Well, then the question is, well, why not? You're not so gifted. You, you've either intentionally hamstrung them or there's no systems in place for them to become as good as you. And, and I think it's a cycle because we can use the example of Katie. Like when, when, when young Katie first started, right, you would, I think, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was like, try this, cool. Now there's really nothing where I'm like, oh, I can't give that to Katie. Right. And you have to give people the opportunity to succeed, right? This is an Eric Press thing. He was like, hey, do, do your best to catch people in, in the act of success or greatness. That's a good, Eric Preston, flow master yeah. on staff. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, and think about so like four or five times you've quoted flow masters. So mm -hmm. clearly they are not only doing this, but it's, it's working. It's transcending Katie from, from this perspective, best hour of their day. What are some of the things that we continue to do? Because I think if we're doing here, you can probably do it at the box as well. Do you have things that a, I guess, are we living by the example we're putting out there? Yeah. I mean, for sure. From, well, number one, from Burns perspective of Rife is literally everything that you guys talk about in Affiliate U, Fern does here. And so that's, I mean, one way. Um, I mean, I talked about it on Monday's podcast. You guys, literally who you are in person is who you guys put out there on the show. What are you smiling? Influencer. Like, uh, OCD? In <laughs> influencer, yeah. Yeah, influencer. yeah, a little, you're a little, yeah, a little bit more OCD than, than I realized. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah let me go check the lights again yeah good. <laughs> so did you shut the oven at the house yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to lock the door yeah um but yeah I, I mean i really think that's the big one it's you practice what you preach and what you put out there but i think too um it's interesting to hear and you talked about it a little bit yesterday with imposter syndrome but now you guys have said with the seminar staff specifically you are now the ogs right so starting out at some point you guys were the new people and had to learn um but it's interesting to hear that you still the humanization of you still struggle with or can have and have to navigate imposter syndrome just like any other coach coming up through an internship process or you're not unrelatable despite how far you guys both have come in those aspects of your lives yeah don't let the credential fool you <laughs> <laughs> jay still has a long way to go um no but you bring up a good point which is that that's always been super important to me is because if you're talking about culture what you mentioned katie is is paramount which is you have to practice what you preach mm -hmm. never ask anybody to do something that you won't do and and it's always super important to me that if, if I, if somebody listens to the podcast, number one, thank you for listening to the podcast. Number two, if you meet me, I want you to be like, damn, like that's literally the guy he is. Or if you come into my gym, that's exactly what he said it was. We have people um, reaching out right now, DMing us like, are you going to be at the games? Are you, you know, yeah. all the time. And it's like, and I, and I, and I, I just don't like, I have a profound fear of being full of shit. So, and everybody's full of shit a little bit, right? Like you, 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 you're, nobody's ever like, this is exactly what it is. But for the most part, like, I don't want you to think, that you get one thing and then that be, cause this has happened to me quite a bit in the, in the kind of like, uh, what we call it? The, um, high, uh, in the coaching world, right. And high performance coaching when like you kind of get behind the curtain and you're like, Oh, you're completely full of shit. Like then you don't do any of this stuff. Um, that to me is not acceptable. Like I, I would have, I would not sleep at night. I would, I would, I would die as an embarrassment, if that was the case. I think when people meet you, they might actually think he's not as grumpy as I thought he'd be. He's probably. nicer. He's nicer than I If they meet me, it's probably because you're not around. And that's why I'm happy. <laughs> then I'll show up and be like, oh, that's, he is grumpy. Never mind. We he's see <laughs> Ackerman is in fact an influencer. <laughs> so no, and, that, and that's important to us. I think, you know, and, and like you mentioned, I think that is the reason we've seen success with Affiliate U because not only do we, I mean, we're going to, again, not to, belabor it but if you look around the tour here if you watch the video on the tour it's it's exactly what we preach with affiliate you and then people get on calls with us and they're like oh yeah i can relate and i trust you and this is exactly what you've been telling us to do on the podcast like well, that the was podcast, from the set out that was from the outset oh, yeah. which is the same way as a gym owner that's the way you should look at coaching your staff like if you're you you can't have people run classes on time if your classes run over. Like, it's not going to work. Same thing if you're a coach. Good luck getting athletes to scale if you never fucking scale. Like, good luck. 
it's not like you're going to have, there's such a gap to be jumped over there that that is a, that is a culture issue that, and you don't understand the effects of that hypocrisy on the culture. One of the things that people hate the most in the world is hypocrisy. So don't be a hypocrite. Yeah. You know, so many boxes are like, Oh, my members are, they're super competitive and they always want to hit RX. And it's like, well, what do you do? Oh, well, I go to every local competition and compete. Like you're going to create that. Right. I, I mean, culture, I don't know the definition. Do you? Young Katie. Katie, Google. Duck, duck, go. <laughs> um, but I mean, culture is what you bring in. So you can't be this guy, like you're saying, and then expect the culture to be different. You know, you guys, I've, I asked both of both you and Marcus about parenting. Mm -hmm. And both of you gave you know, obviously great advice. We were at Katie and I had dinner at your house last night. The kids are great. Funny, super funny, those kids. Um, but, you know, the advice you guys say is like what you say doesn't really matter. No, it's completely irrelevant. Number one, because kids don't understand. But they watch all the time. They're always watching. Yeah. Especially TV. Right. Ninjango yeah. or whatever. Ninjago. 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 Also, I like to point out that Logan personally invited me to her birthday party oh my, and she was, said you were not allowed to come. That was her <laughs> you're a boy. She, her, yeah, she said you're a boy. She is this uh she also couldn't remember when her birthday was. She's so this, was <laughs> second generation of ferns that treat me poorly. Yeah. That's, a, <laughs> that's culture. She's I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna culture. meet Elmo. He'll be canceled next. Elmo. <laughs> Cancel Elmo. Um real quick too, the definition of culture is the customs, arts, social institutions, and achievements of a particular nation, people, or other social group. Yeah, so okay. like I'm thinking customs, arts, stuff like that. So like the logo on the wall, which you can't see in this video, it says you don't have to work out to hang out. Like culture, again, going back to what I stated earlier, is intentional. And something like that, when I was like, hey, I want a gym where people want to hang out at. Well, then let's just write that on the wall. And then what will happen is people will do that. And then you can start creating culture because what you need for culture is people. So the first thing I have to get to, I have to get to is I have to get people to be here and want to stay here. So then I have to create incentives for them to be here, whether it's creature comforts or convenience or all those other or things. Or the committed club. Or the committed club, stuff like that. So there has to be incentives in there. And then I have to feed the culture and have to incentivize it to continue to be positive. You know, so that's why you know, the number of members that I have that have handed me somebody who randomly walked in the door when we didn't have somebody up at the front desk. I mean, they will get them most of the time. They'll, they will grab them and be like, hey, there's a guy up here that needs to talk to you. And I brought, already talked to him around. I showed him. I had a member last week give somebody a full tour because all of the coaches were, were preoccupied. And, and no doubt after that, you rewarded that member. 100%. So some things you do over, like, you'll see it on the tour, but maybe you don't even realize it's like you have this sign you don't have to work out to hang out and what else goes on over there well i've got three flavors of nitro coffee mm -hmm. i've got uh an outlet for with multiple chargers to charge your phone mm -hmm. so you can sit here as long as you want not worry that you can't check my instagram coach jason ackerman uh, you probably follow it um <laughs> you got the ambassador wall so if mm -hmm. somebody's hanging out there they get to know more about who your ambassadors are you have seating, right? So there's all these little things. You can't just, you know, point being, you can't just slap something on the wall and say, hey, cool, it's cool if you hang out here, but do nothing to actually promote the act of hanging out. So I've, and I've helped multiple gym owners with this. This is part of what we do with people is like, I want to see the, the photos of your facility. And yeah, then or we'll, walk through it or walk through. And what we'll do is say, Hey, that there's a little, there's typically like a little nook somewhere that is unused or just completely wasted in space. Could we repurpose that and make it an area that would at the bare minimum look visually enticing for me to go over there and sit down and hang out? Yeah, there's no, and, and by the way, I mean, really you can argue, you can fit some stuff over there, but that like 10 by five, 50 square feet of your gym would probably have gone unused otherwise for sure you could have maybe put a bike or because you're not going to extend the wall to there because no. someone's going to drop right. a barbell it's going <laughs> to smash through the wall you know you need the monitors anyway so you don't want to go overhead in that area um so yeah you most box owners have that in their space they just don't realize it and you, and you can get really creative but you can do all sorts of things there and it does you don't have to break the bank for that kind of stuff either yeah you know, where we went so that was we've rearranged that numerous times and then the lounge is totally different so the lounge is something where we're like hey we we really went 
out on a limb to create that because that was just like people just i find people sleeping in there all the time they got those comfortable yeah lining chairs. so that kind of stuff but again that's the culture but it's not by accident right it's designed intentionally because i'm like okay what would i want what do people like and then you just start kind of looking around and be like all right well, i'm going to create creature comforts and i'm going to cr start creating that vibe whether it's like things you hang on the wall or is there music playing that's one thing that's i i love that right now some people hate that but i if there's a good vibe in the gym, typically you walk in and there's like some sort of low rumble going on in the gym, whether it's music or something else. But it's typically like it doesn't always have to be like blared up to 100 decibels. Just like put on something, a low rumble that when people walk in, be like, hey, it at least feels busy in here. Yeah, it gives the impression something's going on right. and it's never ends. Right. So, so as, we, as we wrap up, really, this idea of culture is, you know, created and it's intentional. Anything else you would you would throw out there that box owners could or should be doing? You have to actively participate in it. It's not one of these things where you set it up and then you leave. You know, somebody has to foster that, which is, you know, the whole Jim Mayer deal. You just might do a little bit less with regard to facilitating it, but you're always kind of participating in it, walking around, spending five minutes over here, joking around, giving somebody else shit across the room, checking in on somebody, see if they need anything, checking in with the coaches, be like, hey, you good? Do you need anything between classes? What can I do for you? Um, do you have any scheduling issues? Do you, is there something that I'm blocking you on? Like all of those things. It's just a constant ask. And if you're trying to create it, you know, I'm going to be, be very candid with everybody. You're going to have to ask those questions repeatedly for months, if not years, before people are like, this dude's not just asking me because he feels like he needs to ask me. Or this girl. She's, at, they're at, she's asking me because she genuinely wants to help me. And that takes a long time because a lot of people aren't used to people wanting to help them. Like, it's not normal in society today, unfortunately. So you're going to have to break people's belief about what that looks like. And then eventually they'll just, they'll start to be preemptive be like, Hey, I need this from you. Or can you do this? Or like, whatever, please solve this for me. It's a serious pain point. Yeah. And, I, and you know, when you and I started affiliate you, that was a big part of it. There's, there's other coaching out there. That's like, cool. We're going to help you grow the business so you can leave it. And our attitude was always, well, if you grow a business, that's fun. Why would why you want to leave? Why would you want to leave it? And and don't get us wrong. We can help you grow it to the point, And we have where you don't have to show up for a week, two weeks right. or really ever. But the, the the bigger picture is, but you want to. Right. And that's the Jim Mayer principle. Like you may not be on the schedule. You may have no reason to be there, but now you want to because it's fun. You've created a box of 100 to 200 of your closest friends. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously you enjoy fitness and and it's fun to become a leader. You right. get to help, you know, you get to help other leaders grow. And, you know, there's a, this idea of division three leadership, not division one, three. It's <laughs> a totally different ballgame. You know, you're creating three still good, though. <laughs> you're creating leaders that create leaders. And right. every member of your box is one of those people. Right. Like if you're doing a good job, the the coaching staff at your box is helping those mem members become leaders, which doesn't necessarily mean they want to coach. Maybe it's leaders in, at work. Maybe it's leaders in their family. You know, maybe they're just happier, more successful people. But if you're doing a good job, it should transcend all the way down to the members. Yeah, and and if you if you do a good job being intentional about the culture and you nurture it and you're intentional about it and you put things in there that would facilitate it and grow it, then it does take care of itself largely. But it will never be it will never be without the need for somebody to shepherd it, right? It, you will always have to kind of like keep your fingers on it to some degree. And then, and if at some point, maybe you step out of that role and it's somebody else, but there will always be somebody there who's going to be kind of like driving the ship, if you will. It's like a, it's like a, you could use this analogy, like a, a ship captain, right? The ship's not down. He's not down in the engine room turning wrenches. That's the engineer, right? He's not, you know, laying out line on the deck. Like that's probably the first mate or somebody like that. He's not even technically driving the ship. They have somebody who's probably doing that, but he's just there to make sure everybody's doing their job. It makes sure like, hey, let's change course here for like one or two degrees a little bit because here's where we're trying to go. And as a gym owner, like that's where you want to spend a lot of your time. It, but it takes a lot of time and effort. It takes a lot of intentionality. It takes a lot of missteps in order to get there. But if you do, what you'll have is you'll have a gym that when people walk in, they're like, this is a cool vibe. I love it. So before we wrap up, last thing, if you're still listening and you love the show, for one, don't cancel us. Like, right. we, you know, we say dumb cancel things at Lou. times. Cancel cancel, if you're going to cancel, cancel Lou. Don't cancel us. <laughs> but check out our YouTube because we have our first professionalized, I wouldn't call it professional yet. 
It's getting there. It's getting there. But we have a full video with multi multi camera shoot, if you will. So check out our YouTube and subscribe to it. Katie's constantly throwing down clips and we're going to be putting more and more out there. Leave us a review. We bumped up on reviews a little bit on Apple, but let's get a few more for us. And ultimately, with the culmination of Culture Week, shoot us some questions. We're going to have a Q&A all about creating, transcending, facilitating culture. So go back to listen to Monday's episode, listen to today's episode, obviously, and listen to Friday's episode, which we're going to record in the car on the way to the CrossFit Games. And Cross, then it, CrossFitters in cars. Crossfitters in cars, probably <laughs> drinking coffee. So if you have any questions on any of these episodes or anything we didn't cover about culture, hit us up in the DMs, email, wherever you want to get in touch with. We'll compile it and we'll get your question answered. We'll start working on that Don't Be a Turd t-shirt. So you never miss an episode of the podcast. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and on all major podcasting platforms at Best Hour of Their Day. Thank you so much for tuning in and for being a part of the best hour of our day. See you next time.